On August 6, 1945, a single bomb named Little Boy was dropped over Hiroshima, Japan. In an instant, 11 square kilometers were destroyed and 45,000 people died immediately. In the following months, the death toll climbed by another 30,000. Just three days later, a second bomb hit Nagasaki with a blast equal to 21,000 tons of TNT, killing 22,000 instantly and another 17,000 afterward. These two events marked the end of World War II, but at a terrible cost. The devastation was caused by something incredibly small, the atom, specifically uranium-235. How could something so tiny unleash such immense power? And could this same element also hold the key to our future? Uranium is one of the heaviest naturally occurring elements on Earth, symbolized by the letter U on the periodic table. While hydrogen is the element of the universe and carbon is the element of life, uranium is the element of energy. It's the only naturally occurring material capable of sustaining a chain fission reaction. Each fission event releases about 200 mega electron volts of energy, a tiny unit of power, but they add up quickly. In fact, a single kilogram of uranium can produce about 24 million kilowatt hours of heat. To put that into perspective, that's more energy than you'd get by burning 3 million kilograms of coal. In simple terms, uranium is a supercharged fuel source. But where does all this power actually come from? The secret is in uranium's atomic structure. Natural uranium consists of three isotopes. Over 99% is uranium-238. A very small amount is uranium-234. And the real star of the show, uranium-235, makes up just 0.72%. This rare isotope has a special property. Its atomic structure allows it to sustain chain reactions. Here's how it works. When a uranium-235 nucleus captures a neutron, it forms uranium-236, which almost immediately splits into smaller atoms like barium and krypton. This fission releases energy, radiation, and most importantly, more neutrons. These free neutrons can then collide with other uranium-235 atoms, triggering a chain reaction. The cycle repeats itself, and with each fission event, more energy is unleashed. The potential is staggering, but it also presents a massive challenge, controlling the reaction. In nuclear reactors, we figured out ways to carefully manage this process. Uranium fuel rods, which are enriched to contain around 4 to 5 percent uranium-235, are placed in water. The water acts as a neutron moderator, slowing the fast-moving neutrons so they continue sustaining the reaction. Control rods made of neutron-absorbing materials like boron are used to adjust the reaction's intensity by absorbing any excess neutrons. Sounds simple enough, right? But even with these safeguards, there are still risks. After several years, the fuel rods lose efficiency and become highly radioactive waste. At this point, disposal becomes a big problem. We typically bury the waste deep underground, hoping it will stay there safely for thousands of years. But is that really a solution? Or are we just kicking the can down the road? There is another option, recycling. Spent fuel can be reprocessed to extract unused uranium-235 and other fissile materials like plutonium-239, extending the life cycle of the nuclear fuel and reducing the amount of waste. Some advanced reactors, called fast breeder reactors, can even convert non-fissile uranium-238 into plutonium-239, effectively making use of the 99% of uranium that otherwise goes to waste. If perfected, this technology could increase the fuel efficiency of uranium by up to 50 times. Plutonium-239 behaves a lot like uranium-235. It captures slow neutrons and undergoes fission, releasing energy. In fact, in many nuclear reactors, about 30% of the energy comes from the fission of plutonium created from uranium-238. But there's a catch. Plutonium isn't just fuel. It's also a potent material for nuclear weapons. And this is where the uranium paradox becomes clear. The same process that lights up our homes can also be used to create weapons capable of ending civilization. It's a scary thought. Is it wise to embrace nuclear energy knowing it involves handling some of the most dangerous substances ever created? This leads us to the darker side of uranium. 
atomic bombs. The key difference between a nuclear reactor and a bomb is control, or the complete lack of it. In a reactor, fission is carefully regulated by control rods and neutron moderators. But in an atomic bomb, the goal is to maximize the number of fission events as quickly as possible. The fission material is enriched to above 90%, ensuring a rapid uncontrolled reaction that releases an immense amount of energy in an instant. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima contained just 64 kilograms of highly enriched uranium-235, yet only about one kilogram actually underwent fission, producing a blast equivalent to 16,000 tons of TNT. That's the terrifying potential locked within a single isotope. To understand this power, imagine the heat involved. Each fission event releases enough energy to raise temperatures to millions of degrees in a fraction of a second. This creates a fireball that is hotter than the surface of the sun. The explosion compresses the air, forming a shock wave that demolishes everything in its path. And then there's the fallout. Radioactive particles released into the atmosphere contaminate the environment, sometimes for generations. Nuclear accidents like Chernobyl and Fukushima remind us that even peaceful applications of uranium can go catastrophically wrong. These disasters raised important questions. Should we continue using uranium for energy? Are the benefits worth the risk? Some argue that abandoning uranium isn't the solution. Instead, we should focus on developing safer reactor designs, such as thorium reactors. Thorium, another heavy element, can be used in different types of reactors that are inherently more stable. It reduces the risk of meltdown and minimizes the production of long-lived radioactive waste. Others suggest that our focus should shift toward nuclear fusion, the process that powers the stars. Fusion promises limitless clean energy without the hazardous waste associated with fission. But despite decades of research, we still haven't mastered the technology. Even so, progress is made every year, bringing us closer to a world where fusion power might be a reality. For now, though, uranium remains one of the most potent energy sources we have. We have a choice. Continue refining our techniques for using it safely or move on to alternative energy sources. Or perhaps we need a combination of strategies to meet the world's growing energy needs. Should we keep improving our recycling techniques and build safer reactors? Should we put more effort into developing fusion or explore new untested technologies? Or should we play it safe and leave uranium untapped, focusing instead on wind, solar, and other renewables? Whatever path we choose, one thing is certain, with great power comes great responsibility. The way we harness the power of uranium will shape the future, for better or worse.